Hello and welcome to another episode of Diaries of Badass Bosses. I am Tiggs Rice. And I am Penny Joyner Platt. And it's just the two of us today. Aww. Back with just the hey, two of you. Hi, how you doing? I'm good. How are you doing? I'm good. What have you been up to this week? Um, gosh, I have mainly been doing a lot of kind of prep work for some big campaigns that are coming up. Exciting. So yeah, really exciting stuff. Um, kind of spring launches, but they have a lot of kind of case study sourcing, mm. that type of thing. So um yeah, doing all the groundwork for that, really. How about yourself? Amazing. Um, I have been doing a mix of content creation. So actually, Connor and I were together yesterday recording loads of new content, um, learning how to do video, because um, that's one of my goals for the year. So managed to get my camera set up with all the uh, all the different programs that I need to record everything. And then really just leaning into sort of the back end of business. I'm still sort of like working my way into January, Um and I had this amazing email from um, my, actually, if you listen to our CRM episode a few weeks back, um, my Light Blue, my CRM company, sent out this amazing email um, with, here's some things that you might not have considered that you can do with your CRM. Um, so like online scheduling and calendars and like little bits and pieces that were in the back end, sort of like post-production stuff. So I've... I, I've actually been working on my CRM, funnily enough. Oh, nice, nice. So, yeah, it's been a busy one. Very good. Well, um, today I thought we could talk about niche audiences mm. and how to kind of dominate the marketplace or at least for your business be a success by honing in to your niche market, finding out what that niche market is. I do get asked it a lot. Yeah. Um, some people really struggle with kind of either understanding it and some people have absolutely nailed it. And then some people are just kind of like, I just don't know anything about it. So I thought maybe we could have a chat about that today. I would love that. And as someone who, through your brand coaching, um, you're having this conversation a lot. So if, if I came to you and said, oh my God, Penny, what even is, any, what is my niche? How do I, what do I do? What is it? How do you broach that conversation with clients? I think because w the main thing with a niche audience is is making sure you're understanding exactly what it is you offer mm -hmm. and who you offer it to. Mm -hmm. Because that's where people can dominate and that's yeah. why it's so important. So those that do get it right and actually do really understand um, are the ones that are going to do really well. And the main thing you, you've got to start with is research. Yeah, You know, if you have an idea... If you have a side hustle, if there's something burning in, do, in you that you're passionate about, that you want to set up and do a business with, do your research mm. and find out what currently the marketplace looks like for that particular industry. What are other people doing and offering? Yeah. Um, who are they talking to? And what is it that you're going to offer that either is alongside or sets you apart and then understand who would want that you know yeah. what does what is that audience who are they who is it that you're talking to what do they look like yes. so I do something called audience mapping mm -hmm. so this is obviously very much embedded in in research yeah. Um, and what I do is I, I work with a client and I will ask them all those questions of yeah. what is it they offer you know, and what they think or who they think their audience is, then I'll go away and do that research. Um, but I think that it's really important that you, you all do it. You know, don't yeah. just rely on, you know, paying someone to do it for you. I think it's good that you need to understand that too. So I think it's a job you do together, if not on your own for your own business. Um, but I would go away and do that research and I would really understand, you know, what that person that persona is yes um and then off the back of that i create a variety of personas not just one yeah um, customer profiles yeah, yeah so that then they can no matter what they're doing whatever they're communicating whether it's on social media um whether it's through a newsletter whether it's through their website they can think of each individual persona and understand who am i talking to when i'm writing this particular post one of my favorite, like when I've done this in the past, I always give that customer profile a name. Yeah, so well, that's the idea. Yeah. So that person actually, like, I don't know, 
let's say you're talking to an Emma, for example, but you know where Emma works, you know how old she is, you know how much time she's spending on her computer versus her phone or, you know, what her shopping preferences are like. And I love going into that kind of detail. Yeah. Um, and actually it can really help you when it comes to marketing yourself as well, because yeah. you know exactly where... If you know where M is going to be, for example, you know exactly where you might want to target your ad spend or marketing budget or... Definitely. I think the important thing with your persona is what are their pain points? Mm -hmm. That's the thing you've got to nail because yeah. that's the reason you are there for them. Because your persona has an issue, has a problem that you are going to solve for them. Yep. And that's what you've got to understand and that's what you've got to nail. And you can have these different personas that have different pain points that you have a solution for each of them. You know, they could be different age ranges. They could be different genders. They could have, you know, different backgrounds. They, yeah. you know, so th th they're all different for a reason, but you're answering them in a different way or, you know, but it's, it's very much understanding, you know, what are the issues that I'm answering for people, which is why you set up your business. Yeah. You know, what, why did you set up your business? What are the pain points that you're offering your clients like what is it the solution that you're offering do you know I will be very honest that when I set up my business I didn't I I, I set up my business in a recession and so it was like I very much came from a place of I'm going to be self-employed and I'm <laughs> going to make this work so I'm not going to sit here and pretend that when I did start my business back in 2009 I had my shit <laughs> together um but I realized that over time I was my ideal client and I the main pain points that I had were, you know, I had always been the person behind the camera. I'd been the person that offered to take the photos rather than the one that wanted to be in them. And so actually everything that I was offering was based around this theme of self-worth and body confidence and confidence in front of the camera. And so once I started then hitting on those specific pain points it became very easy for me to market what I was selling because I'm like actually you know this is and especially when you, it is I mean not everyone is their own ideal client but for me it was like okay what am I feeling what is this experience like how are other people feeling who are in my situation but then equally you know when I started my business I was 22 but I knew <coughs> that my target audience was going to be much bigger than that so my my target audience actually ranges from about 25 to 50, 55 roughly. That's kind of, it's quite a wide span. Um, but looking at that going, okay, well, these are the pain points I'm feeling at whatever age I currently am. But then using my empath skills to be like, okay, well, what's going on in a 30 year old's life? What's going on in a 35 year old's life? Like, and it's having conversations with people and saying, how do you feel at 40 how do you feel at 45 what are the big and going out there and having conversations with people to say okay right okay I know the base of where I'm coming from but let's focus in on where other people are at in that journey so that I could push that further yeah I mean it's interesting actually we've talked initially about people who are starting out understanding mm. but there's a lot of people out there that are listening to this right now that have the business that could have been running for years that mm. actually haven't quite nailed their niche and my advice to them is um, is you need to do customer feedback. You yeah. need to actually do some surveys with your existing customers and do some polls. We now have such like, you know, a, a plethora of ways of getting that. You know, it used to actually be quite difficult back in the day. It was a case of phoning people up, you know. Yeah. Whereas nowadays, social media, email marketing, all of these opportunities make life a lot easier to be able to gauge a lot of feedback from your customers and it's then about listening mm -hmm. and reading mm -hmm. that feedback to understand then what it is you're offering why they've chosen you what is your niche and what pain points you're you're basically helping with um so that would be you know a really key piece of work that i would recommend doing and a lot of your like especially if you have um a dedicated audience that are already buying from you they're you've gone through the no like and trust they've already got that investment and they they want to tell you like the good and the bad and it's mm. it's you know definitely listen to both of those things um but yeah it's there's so much available to you in terms of that knowledge that you mm. can really like start to hone down 
yeah. your niche. I mean, once you've nailed that niche as well, and once you've got a better understanding of it, it's about utilizing that. So using it within your marketing, using it within your messaging, and being able to actually understand where that niche is. So what was it like for you? Because obviously when I started my business, I was like, I was fresh out of uni with no real, you know, I'd done some temp jobs and I'd done work experience and a few bits, but I hadn't had that adult employment history. Whereas when you started the platform, was this was this the first thing you did? Like, how was it for you going into after agency life and then various other parts of sort of like self-employment that you'd done? Well, I think I knew what pissed me off when I was in agency <laughs> life. So it was like, I want to make sure that I'm not pissing anyone else off, basically. You know, um, as I've, I've said before, PR has a bad reputation. Mm. Um, and I wanted to be a solution to customers that enabled people to have access to PR. They shouldn't have to pay a fortune for it. They should be able to do it themselves. They should be able to be able to PR themselves and and, and not pay a fortune to do that. Yep. So my niche was really easy to, to understand because I'd got 20 years of talking to different clients and understanding their pain points, working with agencies, working in-house, or just not getting what they needed, not getting the results they wanted, so many, you know, things, but, you know, that was on the job understanding that I had already yeah. in my armory. So that's, you know, that was different for me. And that's such a great <coughs> point. And do you know what? It's come up a few times over the episodes on this podcast that being pissed off about something is one of the greatest ways <laughs> to start a business. <laughs> that just being able to take those things and you know all those conversations that you've had it's like oh if I ran this business or if I had my own blah like if if I did it I'd do it differently and like taking those even those pain points that you feel in a company and then being like actually you know I I would do this better by this yeah. and so you if especially if you had you've had that life experience of working somewhere else it's the perfect ball of knowledge that yeah. you can bring into yeah. a business because you I already can know. do it better than my last boss <laughs> yeah yeah I love that attitude it's damn true <laughs> <laughs> bum, bum, bum. yeah you know it um so I think the other thing as well is about what once you do like I said about the messaging mm. I think it's then looking at the the content you produce the events that you do yeah. so you can do specific events tailored to the yes. different niches you could literally think right this event is for this persona this you know yeah there's this content I'm producing you know and that also gives you that variety of content as well when you're always yes. stuck going oh my god I've got a whole month's content to produce like oh uh, whenever I do somebody a content plan or I'm teaching somebody how to do it I always say, if you've got three personas, for example, make sure you're speaking to each individual persona once a week. Yeah. There you go. That you've already started that yep. content idea coming. And then your content is really varied because you're speaking to a different audience. But every single time, the question I always get asked, am I not going to alienate? the other one if I'm doing this you no. do not have to hear every <laughs> single person in every single post yeah. and it's impossible to do it because you know even if you are targeting a niche there are yeah and yes there are there are plenty of people on this planet that are very similar to each other but your clients are going to have so much variation and sometimes you're going to hit things that resonate really well with some and some where it's something else um like with mine, for example, a lot of my clients actually love having um, uh, interviews or like, you know, I do questionnaires and interviews post shoots with my clients. So you can read them on my website and different ones resonate with different people, mm. like whether, you know, it's someone who has got divorced and so they're reclaiming themselves or maybe they've been through something quite traumatic and they're like you know what like I'm reclaiming this or you know and different stories will res resonate and 
exactly the same with all content really yeah. it's having that variety so that people have that opportunity to find that thing that connects with you but people understand your business and that you have a variety of offerings mm-hmm. so it's not you know and, and we understand social media and what we want to absorb and then you can tailor things like email marketing mm-hmm. to what they're interested in so you know don't don't my thing is don't stress too much about like my god you know you're show not up. You're, yeah, <laughs> just show up for them but yeah tailor that tailor that content um, I think that's really um, and, and being adaptable and growing with your niche. Yes, because your niche does evolve as well as and that's why your business has to evolve with them. You know yeah. what the media they're consuming, it evolves, you know, the way in which they reach you, it, it, you know, everything it does evolve. So make sure you continue that research would be my other thing. And don't stop. At, oh, OK, I know what my niche is. Yeah keep learning one of the things that I'm going through at the moment actually is especially because my brand is such a personal you know there's such a personal connection to what I offer um I've been having a lot of conversations lately about okay but I'm not the same person that I was like when I started you know 15 years later and it's like is my messaging and the way that I'm talking about it still relevant to 25 year olds you know I'm 37 now so it's like constantly Mm. revisiting that content and saying at this point, especially, you know, 15 years this year, it's basically, you know, we're, we're bordering on next generation. Like, it's how do you stay relevant if you are going to be, if you want to appeal to multiple generations? Like, yeah. constantly revisit that. And also, profile. you know, monitor your competitors mm-hmm. as well. Because the other thing is your audience will stay with you until somebody offers something better you know Mm -hmm. unfortunately we're all fickle and you know we are gonna start looking elsewhere or if we feel like we're not getting everything that we need so again don't just monitor the audience monitor your competitors monitor the industry just keep trying to be ahead of the game and and be able to evolve and you know answer that's just continue to answer that problem be that solution you know for them as as often but I feel like this was really good because I feel like it's always good to have these conversations around specifics you know quite specific um but as I say it's something that I'm always asked so that's why I thought it's a good topic today I think niches I I feel like it's a really daunting thing for a lot of people like oh my I actually have to make some decisions about who like I'm not just throwing it out there to the world like I actually need it but honestly it's worth it's so worth it yeah so our takeaways today then is research Mm -hmm. feedback case studies you know understand where that market is create your personas speak to your personas make sure it's in your messaging um and you know if ever in doubt you know where we are as well like we always yeah. say this every episode but you can always reach out to us for a consultancy um you know free of charge ask us those questions put it in the comments below you know we'll come back to you um you know but as always a, a fabulous session with my wonderful tigs and yes. connor yes and we will be back with more badass energy next week yes excited. very exciting it'll be guest time next week so yeah yep. so don't forget to uh hit that follow button and make sure that we're turning up in your feeds and we will be back very very soon see you then <laughs>